Um, and then, of course, there's this really other good article here from ex Berliner talking about it. This is a really heartbreaking one. It says the Great Depression, Berlin's millennials in crisis. Um, this is the following. In another time, Hannah um, might have been a poster child for New Berlin. Since moving to Hapstada, right, is how you pronounce it, from her native Hungary five years ago, the 33-year-old hairdresser and makeup artist has worked tirelessly to build a creative career, freelancing from a range of theatre and film productions. Her business improved, she could finally afford to rent her own apartment. And early last year, she took the plunge. For the first time in her life, she had said she had her own place. Quote, I had moved away from home for school at the age of 18, where I lived in a dorm and then shared an apartment, she remembers. Coming to Berlin, I couldn't afford a space to myself at all. So I was moving from WG to WG. I know that hassle. Finally, I got to a place in my life where I could afford to pay for an apartment on my own. And I loved it. She just imagined the amount of these stories I've heard. And so it's insane how many of these stories I've heard from other people um, across, especially across the UK, most so in London, but it's a common thing where people had, I don't know what happened, maybe because it was, it was 2020 thing and people wanted to make change, but the amount of people that put down, you know, deposits for mortgages, went, you know, and moved across the country, set up a business and then bang, COVID strikes and it's like... Whew. Shortly afterwards, the first um, shortly afterwards the first lockdown um, was announced. The novelty quickly wore off, giving way to loneliness and depression. Hannah found herself alone in her flat. Now, a year later, in the virus second wave, the daily news narrative of the fast spreading corona mutations, Hannah is feeling is feeling sorry, seriously hopeless. She has been searching for a therapist for six months, but Berlin's mental health services seem to be overwhelmed with high demand. Since hitting a low point at Christmas, eating pasta alone in an apartment while everyone she knew was with loved ones she has been considering giving up on Berlin and moving back to her parents place in Hungary how depressing is that this is kind of one of those things that really is one um kind of um I guess a consequence of living in such a hyper connected city with such a thriving scene and community of kind of young people is I could imagine I think the same occurs in London London's a bit different because London people are a bit more I, would say, I wouldn't say stuck up, but scene-wise, people are a lot more uh, clicky, right? They tend to keep themselves to their friendship groups and the people that they know, um, especially if you try and get into, you know, don't even speak about trying to make friends in fashion and in music and shit. It's hard to break in. Once you do break in, it's fine. People are lovely, but it's hard to kind of crack in. Whereas in Berlin, it feels like people are, or in Germany, people are a little more open. They're willing to kind of accept more people. Where do you come from? They want to share, you know, just whatever it may be. It is just better. But I can also, I can also, I can also imagine on the flip side, it could also be a very lonely place when you have no real friends, right? You can be really hyper-connected. You could go to a park and, you know, jump from house party to house party and afters to afters. But I could also imagine if, you don't, if you're not that social, it could be very lonely because who's going to come and find you? And, you know, who, how are you going to meet people if you're not going out and shit? It can be a very, very lonely place, I can imagine. So definitely um, see where she's coming from here. She said, yeah, Hannah's story is not an isolated case. While the physical and economic costs of the pandemic are clear countless berlins are also suffering from various forms of psychological hardship often in private and often to an overwhelming degree mental health professionals are now sounding the alarm about corona's long-term long-lasting emotional damage in doing so they're identifying a surprising group of at-risk berliners not isolated seniors or homebound school children but people in their 20s and 30s above all singles those from outside the city it might seem counterintuitive that a demographic usually seen so young and carefree privileged um would uh have would face a heavier psychological burden from the pandemic but the very flexibility that makes millennial while in Bella, how you pronounce that word while berliner life to be so romantic can very quickly turn sour particularly when the pandemic blocks off persons usual sources of belonging companionship and income of course like i said um it just becomes harder to get but of course like if part of your lifestyle i remember once staying in an airbnb when i was in berlin right um this was when i was doing my whole technical tourism thing maybe a couple of years ago it was a great probably the be best apartment i stayed in i usually I always kind of stay in my own place i rent like a, an apartment somewhere i don't know i'll go to somewhere you know corny like like Neuklon or whatever and stay there right and just you know get an apartment to myself a little one bed so I don't know you know so I can come in when I like and shit so after you know it's a bit awkward when you stay in people's houses and you have to like walk past their living room and <laughs> shit <laughs> oh you do whatever you're doing in your bedroom and they can hear you and shit it can get a bit weird so this one time I did stay in a shared accommodation. It was really cool. Everyone was flipping amazing people from all over the world you know making it happen in you in Berlin um I remember waking up and kind of, I've no, I came back from a club. No, I woke up actually to go somewhere. No, I woke up here yeah, to go get breakfast, go get some eggs. And the guy that was staying there was just like sleeping on a the couch. He had nothing to do. 
He was getting good benefits from the German government. He told me how much he got. I was like, bloody hell, popped my eyes out my head. And he just basically is an artist who just you know, goes to lounge around in his home, in his boxes, you know, just sleep with the, with the window open, sun beaming on his face and just chill. That was his life. And then I imagine later on, he'd probably gather his stuff, text his friends, find out what the motive was, go to a local bar where his friend worked at, pay half price on drinks, go maybe to a club somewhere, score some free drugs, hang out with people, go to an after. It's like a great lifestyle, right? But again, when that, but, the, but then people underestimate how much the importance of those kind of things to people like that, right? That's their fuel. That's what gives them a reason to live. It might seem a little bit, you know, it might seem a little bit, uh, what are we called, rudderless, or it might seem like it's lacking in, in, in overall, I don't know, like a goal they're aiming to reach, but that is a lifestyle that people should be allowed to live and to be allowed to exercise and kind of enjoy. And the moment that that kind of gets cut off, it kind of really makes you question why you're even there. Because part of the reason why you're you're there is that you're kind of, you know, you go to Berlin and places like that, it's not the most beautiful place in the world, right? It's not Paris. And you're kind of giving up that kind of visual beauty for the access, for the community, right? For the unbounded potential of your night, right? I always say Berlin, similar to Madrid, similar, I'd say, to Barcelona, similar to... Maybe not Paris, it's kind of similar, kind of, but you have to be the right group. I think Berlin is probably one of the most, the best spontaneous city in the world, right? You can legitimately be at a house party or at a rave and then end up somewhere random that you never even knew existed based on who you met in the toilet, right? It just can change, right? At, at a flip of a coin. Whereas in London, it kind of feels a bit like, unless you know the people that you're going out with and you know where you're going and you are familiar with the places that you should be going to and all this sort of good stuff, you're going to be limited on what you can kind of enjoy. It continues here. Um, like many single Berliners, Hannah has found it challenging to live alone during a pandemic. She has been she had been thrilled at first and even when the lockdown was announced, she dedicated herself to decorating the space. Everyone did this, isn't it? Remember people baking bread? Where's all the where's all the bread bakers, isn't it? On Instagram, where are you? People used to bake bread. People that used to get dressed up. Oh my God, it's Friday night, so I'm getting dressed up people they used to do those really cringy diaries day 100 and the, the, the lockdown where are you now where are you where are you um for a while i was making things pretty she said i ordered plants hung them in my handmade macarons i sewed with new curtains with work on pause hannah enjoyed catching up on television and books trying out new recipes and developing an exercise routine she spoke to family and friends on skype and went on walks with acquaintances from work it was all looking good she remembers but then at some point it just became harder and harder to get out of bed and i gradually stopped all the activities i was doing i suddenly realized i didn't really have any friends here because i was working so much anyway suddenly nothing made sense and that honestly is true i know for me that was the main thing i was meant to again it's so odd in how this is i was always a kind of guy like thinking okay if i have more time to do the things i need to do i'm going to keep on doing them but actually i choose to do the things i want to do with knowing for what the world is reopened right but when the world isn't open and i have to do the things i have to do it then becomes a chore so for instance reading working out um, learning a language, uh, drawing, writing, all these things I was doing prior when I had many things going on. I had to go to the office, I had to be at certain places, right? Like, I was doing them, right, at a high level, right? Constantly flipping, grinding my ass off, sleeping four hours a night, waking up in the morning at six to go for a run, going to the gym after work, you know, then going to go DJ somewhere in a club for flipping four hours, uh, come back home again, sleep uh, four hours, wake up again, go for work. I, my flipping, I was on, 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 on. The moment lockdown happened, pew, that all stopped. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Even though I have all the time in the world, I can do it whatever I want to do right now, right? Because I have no time time constraints. You you wake up in the morning, you work in the morning, you finish in the evening, but you finish exactly on the, you start at the time, you finish exactly on time. There's no one pulling you left and right. Your meetings on Zoom are perfect at the moment now. Even though it's a bit annoying, the good thing about Zoom is that they usually end when they end because you have to add more time onto the end of it. People are backed up with their meetings and shit. It's great, but I'm less productive. I'm, I'm, my extracurricular activities have gone completely down. I'm not doing any of the stuff I was doing prior to lockdown. So I definitely feel it here. She said here, um, as spring turned to summer, Hannah made an effort to fight her malaise, hopeful that things would soon be returning to normal. She found some work opportunities and set out to build a stronger friendship. She, had, she attended a picnic she used to turn down, reached out to people she knew from company, and after a week of recharging in Hungary, decided to find someone to date. 
A handful of Tinder and Bumble meetups came to nothing. However, and Hannah soon felt depression returning. I was trying so hard. Bless her, man. She seemed like she was really giving it a good go. I was trying so hard, but in the back of my mind, I was already too gloomy, she said. By the end of summer, I was back in bed, not feeling ever motivated to do anything at all. Hannah ate a lot of junk food. Yep. I'm here with you, babes. Someday she'd left the bedroom to use the toilet. She was thoroughly alone. Jesus Christ. Some days she only left the bedroom to use the toilet. God damn it, man. I feel her. One night she says, I woke up from a dream where I was dead and no one found my body for weeks. God almighty. I've been there, man. Like I said, I'm the fattest I've ever been in my entire life because of lockdown. I'm going to say, uh, you go, oh, excuse me. No, bruv, honestly, I used to do two a days a week. Two a days, I'd do like three of them a day, a week, sorry. I would go in the gym at 6 a.m. in the morning. I'd then come back home after work and I'd run for a minimum of three miles, right? consistently three days a week under the time of like I don't know, 25 minutes or something like that right so i'm going at a pretty decent pace eight minutes or something lower right per mile pushing myself then i'd work out in the evenings i'm sorry i work out on the weekends too sometimes you know a couple of hours on a saturday in the gym again sometimes i'd love to do it because i'd like to give myself a little bit of a i'd like to put myself through some pain so that i can enjoy the night out later in the evening and not feel so guilty about getting fucked up whatever it may be and now pew, stopped I was going to order a kettlebell at home, but I'm not doing a kettlebell in my apartment with carpet and shit, steaming up the... It's just, it doesn't feel the same, do you know what I mean? It continues here. The day after her disturbing dream, Hannah decided to seek help. She immediately began looking for therapists online. So they messaged a number of suitable looking practitioners she found via the Association of Counselors and Therapists website. She said, and I quote, I was proud of myself for taking this step, she said. Hannah had battled depression from her teens and 20s, but it was a taboo topic back in Germany. She said, I was happily thinking that in Germany, you'd be getting so much support of mental health issues, but boy, was I wrong. Hannah got no response from her first round of messages when she broadened her search to English speaking therapists. She still failed to secure a place. I've contacted about 100 therapists so far. God damn it. Most of them don't even reply. And if they do, it's just a what say. They have no capacity for new patients at the moment i feel like i'm on the verge of breakdown that's a problem though i'd imagine a lot of it has to do with infrastructure cool but i'd imagine the demand and the strain on mental health ish, mental health institutions and practitioners now is on another level they are probably inundated with people who want to seek help inundated inundated right they're probably on another level in terms of the requests that they're getting so this makes complete sense man um second lockdown blues should we read the whole of this? But yeah, you can read the whole of it. Um, it's on actually it's on Ex Berliner. I'll put the link in the show notes so you can check it out. It's titled The Great Depression: Berlin's Millennials in Crisis by Ex Berliner. Really good. This website's awesome too. I think I found a lot of really cool clubs on here. They had a really cool. Um, they had a really cool. What do they have? Oh, they had a really cool like list of clubs that you could attend there like a, oh um, a list of clubs that you would only know if you're a Berliner sort of thing the comments are funny people are like oh why are you blowing up all the spots but it's a really good site I really recommend you check it out um, honestly what one what a great article definitely resonates with me as to what's going on here in London and in the UK in general so definitely check that out